Right, man, as you saw, I washed my car yesterday and look. There's another one on it. What's going on, man? It's like they're, it's like they're targeting my car, man. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Look, that spot there. For God's sake. Hello folks, good afternoon. I've managed to get myself some of these crisps, folks, these Euro crisps. Now I've already tried two of them, and these are the other ones we've got left. So we have uh, chicken, chicken tackle masala, or we also have sour cream and sweet chilli kicker flavour. So I think I'm going to go for these ones first. Well, these are the family size pack, look at this, it's a pound for that, so <clears throat> here we go folks. Have a smell. Okay, here we go. Well, what does it taste of? Um, Taste of, of anything, sour cream and sweet chili. No, nope, there's nothing coming through here, man, at all. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> oh, here comes the chili. Oh, here comes the chili. Oh, here it is. Mm, well, I think some of them are supposed to be sour cream and some of them are supposed to be chili. I don't know. Well, not bad. Not bad at all, man. Um, yeah, I don't think I could eat loads of those, though. Um, yeah, the, the, the chili is coming through now, but other than that, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think I'll give them a... Mm, that's going to get a pathetic four. I didn't like them at all, man. Four out of ten for those ones. And here we go then for the chicken taco masala. Wait till I cleanse my palate, folks. Right, so after a rather disappointing fall, the palate has been cleansed. And now we're gonna have the chicken masala. Once again, have a, a smell of that, folks. So here we go. Nice big crisps, I must say. You get really big, big crisps. So here we go. Yeah, well, um, I've had masala before, but this doesn't really taste anything like a. Mm. They're not too bad. Look at the size of that crisp, man. Look at that. Wow, massive. Huge crisp in here. Look at this. Look at the size of these crisps. Massive. So yeah, these ones are definitely a lot, a lot more tasty. Mmm, yeah. Mm, so far, they're my favourite ones, man. Oh, these get a good. 
I give them an eight, an eight out of ten on the ometer. They're really, they're really nice. Mmm, yeah. I keep looking at the packet as if it's going to change the taste of it somehow. But no, that's got a nice aftertaste coming through. So it's like almost got a sweet sort of mango chutney taste coming through it. It's really nice. Mmm. Yep, yeah, they're definitely my favourite out of the whole four. These ones are the best. Mmm. Excuse me while I stuff my face, folks. Yeah. I'm seeing a few loads in there as well. Mmm. Okay, well, there we go. Mmm. Well, I'll keep them and seal them up. And, uh, and the next thing I'm going to have to do is try and work out this puzzle that Grandad, as an old man, sent me. Um, I'm going to have to check the video again to see how these things work. God, it's going to be complicated, man. I know it's Grandad put a little, where is it? He drew a little, he drew a little Grandad, that's his insignia, that one there. And also got um, a little, a little one like that as well. There we go. Yeah, fantastic, isn't it? So, thank you, Grandad. So that's that's my next uh, task is to is to try and work out how to get that puzzle together. So, oh goodness knows how I'm going to do that. But Grandad did say it was quite brittle. Um, yeah, as you can see, some of them I think have snapped. Is that, is that supposed to be glued in? Yep. Okay. Right. Thanks for watching, folks. I need a haircut. Good morning. Now, we're going to start a little mini-series here uh, about my ukes. I've got four of them, so I'm not going to do uh, do them all in one sitting. We'll do them one at a time. So I'm going to start off with this one here, which is in the shape of a Telecaster. Now, it is a right-handed uke, so it should be played this way, but as you know, I'm left-handed, so it goes upside down, which makes it a little bit awkward for when you want to get up to the high notes and a little bit awkward down here as well when you want to play one of these notes down here because this bit sort of gets in the way, the headstock. However, <clears throat> when I bought this, it was uh, £49.50 from a shop in Newcastle. So I've called this one Geordie, this one, Geordie. And <clears throat> when I got it, the strings on it were absolute crap. They were the, the, the cheapest, it was like little bits of elastic bands almost, and it was rubbish. So I thought, oh, well, uh, I'll put decent strings on it. So I didn't do that for a while, but uh, I did uh, just recently put some decent strings on it and man what a difference it makes um, on this uke it's very very playable now whereas before uh, you could hardly get a sound out of it nowadays listen to the sustain on this it goes on forever and this is the one of course that Frankie um, put a little jag insignia on there he burned that into that um, so yeah it's made it a very very playable uh, you as well. The action is pretty decent on it, and uh, I just think it's a. It's got some really decent sort of uh, tuners on it for the price of it. 
the um, the tuning heads are actually pretty decent and it stays in tune really well to so Mahalo. Have I got another Mahalo? No, I've got a, a Kala and a Makala. They all they all sound the same. These things, but uh, as you can see, it is laminated wood. But for a laminated wood, uh, uh, the sustain on it is incredible. for the for 50 quid man um it's fantastic it's just got one of these uh these normal sort of it's not a compensator bridge it's just a normal bridge uh just got quite a small sound hole uh really but as i said the sound that you get from it is incredible the only downside is that um not that not that i i can play loads of notes away at the top so it doesn't really bother me that much the only thing is that down here sometimes when i want to play a a seventh it does just get in the way a little bit with the headstock but other than that it's uh it's a really nice uke and uh it's quite an, an unusual sort of uh telecaster shaped ukulele that I'm, I'm really happy i've got uh for my collection and made even more sort of more personalized with the, the jag motif in it and if you watch the jag lives channel then you'll know what happened there and why that had to be changed <laughs> so uh Got quite a nice sort of uh, treble. It's more of a trebly sound. You don't really get much of the bass notes on it, but it's a nice sort of. There's no sharp bits on it, nothing like that. So a really nice uke. So that one gets. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do a normative thing because they're all. They're all more or less the, the same, um, apart from my really good one, obviously, which is the, obviously the best. But uh, there we go. That's uh, Geordie. This one is called. Um, it's well balanced. Look at that. Fantastic. I just love the the colour of it as well. Nice cream colour. Brilliant. So there it is. Thank you. It's like Jimi Hendrix. You know, Hendrix played an upside down Telecaster. It's a fun uke um, and one to bring out at parties and uh, basically just show off. Thank you. Boom. Good morning, folks. Here we are at the Claypots uh, Junction, as usual, stuck in traffic. But uh, the seagull situation um, seems to have resolved itself. I think the seagull's gone, man. However, the best name that I got out of uh, everybody on Instagram, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, leaving uh, a name, was the name was Bomber. Bomber, because Gary Newman had a song way, way back called Bombers. So Bomber seemed to be quite uh, uh, apt. And the way the seagull, you know, you know let, let, let's go a bomb. And other people saying, because my car's blue, it looks like the sea. <laughs> and that's why they go for it. So uh, Bomber, the name, um, I can't remember who said the name Bomber. I can't remember. Snap Happy. Snap Happy. You have won yourself a Jag Lives badge. And also, I'm going to start hiding Jag Lives badges around the place because uh, people are saying, could you hide some more badges, Jag? It's the way for folks to get some badges. So that's what I'm going to start doing, folks. I'm going to put them in those little um, money bags, you know, and just wrap them up and stuff them away somewhere and hide them. So look out for Jag Lives badges. All right, the lights have changed and I'm off. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, folks, I've just been shopping and uh, here is what I got. I had to get some shaving gel and some deodorant. 
and also got some razors. Now I'm going to try these ones. These are Gillette um, Sensitive 3 and it says you get 60 shaves out of that. So how many is there? There's one, there's six. So 10, 10 shaves per, th I don't think so, man. I only get uh, about three shaves out of that because uh, I've got quite a strong stubble. Um, I've, got my, I've got myself another fidget cube, folks. I couldn't help myself. Look, <clears throat> a nice purple one. And also I got this because bro recommended this and when he tried it, it looked the most disgusting thing ever. But I'm going to try this Rustler's Chicken Burger. It's going to be the most disgusting thing ever, but that's my tea tonight, folks. So we'll try that and see what it's like. Goodness me. And while I'm here, folks, I must say um, hello to Tim Jackson. He wanted a shout out. So Tim Jackson, hello there, sir. Thank you very much for watching my channel and being on my channel and commenting and saying hello and all that kind of stuff. So we're going home. All right, folks. Posty has been. Yes, he's been. What's he sent me? This is from Pure Beat Radio. Now, Pure Beat Radio, I did a little jingle thing on my, uh, my ook this morning and uh, sent it to Pure Beat Radio. And they're going to use it on their channel. So that's awesome. Thank you very much, Pure Beat Radio. And also I must say hello to Alfie, who uh, stopped me outside there and said, are you Jack Betty? And I said, yes. I had an arm full of shopping though. So I was like, oh, hi mate, how are you doing? Um, and I gave him a badge. So Alfie, thanks for stopping and saying hello. I love when people say hello. Have I got my t-shirt on back to the front? I have, haven't I? <laughs> I've got, I thought it was a bit funny. That should be on the back. Never mind. Yeah, it's back to front. It feels funny. Anyway, we're gonna, I, sh I shouldn't have said anything. You wouldn't have noticed. We're gonna open this. Stanley, come on Stanley, what have we got then? I wonder what it is. Now I know Pure Beat Radio were giving away um some goodies. So I wonder I think it's I think it's a I think it's a flag. It's a flag man, yes, excellent. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Pure Beat Radio flag. Awesome. So yeah, do tune into Pure Beat Radio, man. The best music mix. Um, and on a Thursday and a Sunday at nine o'clock. They play um, new talent, um, and I've been on it a few times, which is awesome of them putting me on there. Thank you very much indeed. I do appreciate that. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to have to do some new tracks um, and send them off to them. So, uh, But thank you for the flag. That's awesome. I'll hang that somewhere. Um, There's something else I was going to do, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, I'm going to go and have a shave. That's what I need to do, man. So I'm going to go and try these new... Um, these new razors that I got. 60 shaves out of six razors. There's no way you're going to get 10 on there. Uh, look at my look at my new fidget cube, man. It's awesome, isn't it? Brilliant. Rosie hates these things because when I'm sitting there playing with it, it drives her bananas. So I have to play with it when she's not there. I have to play with my cube uh, in private. And <laughs> but yeah, it's great. I love it. It's just great. These buttons. Where's my other one? I've got a few of these cubes. Now look. I've got this one here. I love these these spinning ones. These are just fantastic. I love these. They're great. And um, there's another another spinning one. I forgot I had these actually. These are great fun. Look at that. And again, these drive rosy bananas. But this one's got a little sort of nodule thing on the top, which makes it even more fidget value there for that one. And uh, what else have we got? We've got this one here, which is I think it's like an early edition of of the cube. Because there's this one here, and there's the. Uh, this one's got a few different sort of things on it, um, but still, it's a, it's a good, it's a good cube. It's a bit more sort of plasticky than the than the others, but it's still a, a good cube. So that's my cube collection. It's now got an extra cube added to it. I've got a green one of these somewhere, but uh, yeah, fantastic. You sit and play with these for hours, man. Sitting there just like doing this all the time. Must be good for the fingers, I suppose, isn't it? Good for my fingers, for my flexing my finger muscles. Anyway, right. I'm waiting to have a shave, folks. Let me put that, uh, just leave that there. Right, here we go. Next time I see you, I will be clean shaven. Right, folks, I just had a shave with this uh, razor. And I must say, it's uh, three three blades on it, so it makes for a nice smooth shave. And I like the uh, the handle on it. It's very ergonomic, is that the word? Um, you can get into all sorts of positions. And uh, it's, it's actually a really good shave you get with that, so I like that. And it's got a nice swivel head. And it's got one of those strips on it, the uh, the gel strip, so you get a nice smooth shave all over. Yeah, and I must say, I do like the the handle on it. It's very, as I said, ergonomic. Look at it. It's it's, uh, it's well thought out. That handle, I like that. It's, uh, I mean, I'm left-handed, so I suppose it doesn't matter what hand, right-handed, left-handed. Um, yeah, I've never actually shaved right-handed before. 
be, it'd be weird to do that. See, when I shave, I always, I always put the gel on first, obviously, and then um, I always shave down here first. I always shave here first. Go, go for this bit down here, and then down here, under there, and then there, under there, and then I do my moustache bit down here, under there, and then sort of around about here, down here, and then this bit always seems to be last. I just do this bit last of all, and then. Once it's done, I kind of make sure that there's there's always little bits that you sort of need to do. So you just do this kind of thing and and that's it. And there we go. Shaved. So that's one shave I've had out of that. It says you get 60 shaves. Where's that thing on? Look, up to 60 shaves on this. That's one I've had. They should have a marker on here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do, folks? I've got, a, I've got a Sharpie pen somewhere. Where do I do my Sharpie pen? Where are you? Sharpie. Um, oh, for goodness sake, where is it? How come you never find things when you... When you want them, is that it? There it is. There, right? There's my sharpie there, right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, where I mark it on here. I'm going to mark it here on the bit there. So that's one shave I've had. So I'll just put a a line across it, or just a dot. So that's one shave I've had out of that. So we'll see how many shaves we get. As I said, normally I get three shaves out of a a normal Gillette uh, razor. So we'll, we'll count how many we get out of them. So there we go. You put it in the microwave for a minute, I think, is what you do. Let's have a look. Microwave for one minute and 30 seconds, right? right okay. Okay. Here we go then. We put it in the microwave for a minute and 30 seconds, right? I'm, sorry, I'm not holding that much hope for this. Oh, God, it smells absolutely disgusting. It's got some sauce on it as well, look. Right, so this is what's going in. There it is. Put it in the microwave for a minute and 30 seconds. Actually, I'll get some, I'll get a plate. It smells, it smells like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right. That's it in, folks. It's going. Yeah, as I said, there, this sort of thing Bro had uh, a burger and it was the most disgusting looking thing ever. It was, it was insipid and pale looking. So, um, as I said, I'm not holding out much hope for this. And you get this kind of sauce with it as well. I'm not sure what that, what that is. <laughs> yeah. Right, anyway, we'll try it. We're doing this for the, for the content. I'm doing it for you folks. This was a pound from um, B&M's. So, we'll see what it's like. Folks. Right, folks, that's it. Pinged. Here it is. Oh, God. Right, I need to put the, put the sauce on it next. Right, here we go. Did it, did it. Oh, jeez, I think it's stale. This one looks disgusting, does it? Oh my god. Right. Okay then, this is it. This is it folks, we're gonna have to go and eat it now. Right. Oh god, the things I do, man. So this is basically my tea, this is. Right. I'm gonna give you an honest opinion. As I said, I don't hold that much hope for it. I'm going to leave it to stand for uh, about a minute, I think, is what you're supposed to do. So we'll leave that to sit. The, the roll's gone dead soft. Um, 
You never know, folks, it might be, it might be the best thing I've ever eaten, but I don't think it will be somehow. Okay, we'll leave that to sit for a minute and I shall be right back. You are in my vision, right? Here goes, oh, that plate's roasting, crikey. Oh, no, man, it's, God, the roast just falling apart. Oh, they're all stuck to the plate, oh, for goodness sake. Ah, oh, jeez, oh. God, that roll is absolutely wrong. I'm going to have to leave that stand for a little bit longer. It's still roasting. Back in a minute. I'm going to do what the footballers do. There's been some sort of hoo-ha about them moving the bottles of Coke away because I think they're not supposed to be advertising um, things when they're getting interviewed. So Ronaldo, there was bottles of Coke there and he sort of moved them away. And so did, I think Harry Kane did the same. So I'm going to be doing exactly what they do and move that away. But I do like a tin of Diet Coke, folks, I must say. It's nice and cold straight from the fridge. Delicious. Right, has this thing cooled down yet? Right. It's, the, the bottoms were soggy and wet. My glass have steamed up. It doesn't taste of anything. <coughs> My God, I'm choking. All I can taste is something chewy. And that sauce is really vinegary. Um, it's still actually roasting on the bottom there. So I've taken a bite out of it. No, it's really rubbery. I can taste the, the Kentucky Fried taste coming through now. Oh, God, look at that. Oh, that's horrific. It's unedible, look. I'm sorry you have to watch that, folks. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. Look what's happened. Look. The whole thing is just unedible. That's what's happened to it. Look, look at the state of it. That is it, right? I'm not going to eat that, man. That's just the most disgusting thing I think I've ever had in my life. Look at it. That, so that's it. I'll try one more bite. No. That is awful. Yeah. My God, that is a waste of a pound. As I said, folks, I'm sorry you had to witness that. It can't be very nice you watching that coming out of my mouth and everything. Sorry about that. But it's absolutely disgusting. That gets a, <coughs> a nothing. The first ever nothing out of 10 on the ometer, folks. A big zero. A nothing for that. That's awful. Yuck. Right, folks. Well, there we go. So I'm going to have to find somebody else for my tea now. Bro, how on earth could you eat something like that? I just don't know. Disgusting. Yeah.